7.50 p.m. on December 29, 2020, the Oldsby Police received a call from the Illinois Valley Community College Security Office in regard to a suspicious vehicle parked behind a building in the automotive school building. It was reported the vehicle was a full-size RV-type vehicle. Officers responded and located the vehicle as reported. The officers approached the vehicle and knocked on the door. The suspect opened the door spoke to the officers. After a short conversation, the officers asked the suspect if he would come out of the RV and speak to them at the rear of the RV. He complied, and during further discussion with the officers, he pulled a semi-automatic pistol and began to fire at the officers. The officers returned fire and took cover near their vehicles. Both vehicles were hit by gunfire, and as the officers moved to another location, a suspect got into one of the squad cars, and drove off, and left the area of the campus parking lot. The officers requested assistance, and numerous area agencies responded. When they began to search for the squad car, it was located not far from the location of the gunfight in a residential area. Officers approached the squad car and found it to be empty. Officers were able to locate fresh tracks in the new snow and proceeded to follow them back onto the IVCC campus and then into a wooded area and down a hill into another residential area along the Illinois River. More responding officers were stationed on the Shipping Sport Bridge and did in fact see the suspect running along the river towards the bridge. Officers yelled at the suspect to stop, and he was then taken into custody by the pursuing officers. He was taken to Illinois Valley Community Hospital, where he was treated for a head wound and subsequently released from the custody of LaSalle County Sheriff's investigators. He is currently in custody at the LaSalle County Jail. A search warrant was issued by the LaSalle County State's Attorney's Office for the RV that the suspect was in, and reports are being forwarded to the State's Attorney's Office for their review. Illinois State Police Crime Scene investigators were called to the scene as well as the Kane County Bomb Squad and technicians. Agencies responding to the request for assistance were LaSalle Police, the Peru Police, the Tonica Police, the Illinois State Police, and LaSalle County Sheriff's deputies. All cases, as in all cases, the suspect is presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. And the suspect that is listed on the front is uh, Peter Douglas uh, Bergsma, uh, 35 years old. So. Uh, if there's any questions in regard to the to the whole situation, it's fine. I'll try to answer them. Uh, uh, Todd is here to answer any questions that would come from the charging or discussion about the state attorney's office side of this. Okay. So yes, sir. Uh, for the suspect, uh, what city is the suspect's address? Uh, we're still working on that. Find out exactly where he's from. Okay. There, there is some indications. The plates on the on the vehicle were Michigan, so we believe we we're pretty close to exactly where he was from, but we are working with Michigan authorities uh, to try to determine exactly where that is. So that's why there's no address on it right now uh, for you to have, because we, I don't want to say until we can be you know, relatively certain at the start. Yeah. Was anybody actually hit by the gunfire? Um, there, there's indications that the, the head wound was uh, sustained during the gunfight. Like a graze wound? Uh, more of a graze, yeah. More of a graze than a, than a direct hit, yeah. So he's out of the hospital and in the custody. He's out of the hospital and he's in the jail, yes. He's here on, uh, on an investigative hold right now, and uh, Todd will talk about the, uh, the charging. So, Todd, do you want to do that? Do you want to talk about the charging? Or I don't know if interested in that. Well, at this point, <clears throat> the investigation is still ongoing. Uh, things happened last night, a little bit later in the evening, obviously with the weather and the fact that the circumstances behind where the RV was located, uh, we had the bomb squad come and clear everything before the uh, police got in and, and actually searched the RV. So uh, this thing took a lot of time last night and it's pretty fresh this morning. So we've not seen police reports and we don't have all the evidence yet. So uh, charging decisions will be made sometime today at a minimum, I would expect that uh, the suspect will be charged with aggravated discharge of a firearm and additional charges are, are pending the completion of the investigation. 
Would he be in court today or should, uh, tomorrow? Or? Tomorrow, definitely. Um, it could be this afternoon, but it's, I'm waiting on other people to provide reports and, and information to us, so I can't predict you know, when we'll get that. I would say probably more likely tomorrow morning. Any residents in the neighborhood involved in this in any way, either endangered or uh, helping you out? Know, well, initially, when when he left in the in the in the stolen squad car, he pulled into a neighborhood not very far at all from the automotive uh, building at IVCC, literally across the road and and down the and down the street a little bit east toward Piety Hill. So when he pulled into there. Uh, yes, there was a serious concern that uh, the residents uh, were in the houses that were that were there. The officers were pretty immediate when they found the tracks leading away from the vehicle, which uh, we we felt better that he wasn't in a house at that point in time. And then ultimately he was seen running along the tracks that followed the tracks, took him right to where he was along the river, and then he, he came out uh, near Shipping Sport. Sheriff, you said he, the squad car was found not too far. Is that because it was disabled by the officers and returning fire? Or? Um, can't say for sure exactly, but there was uh, a lot of defects in the vehicle. Uh, the front tire was, uh, one of the front tires at least, that I saw was, uh, was pretty well uh, blown off the rim. And I don't know if that's from hitting, could have been from hitting some, uh, some curbs, because quite honestly, you, it was pretty hard to see in the snow, <clears throat> the depth of the snow, the curbs and things out in the, in the parking lot. So it's quite possible that he hit that pretty hard going out and maybe that deflated the tire. It could have bent the rim. I, I don't know for sure, but the tire was deflated and, and it wasn't going to be driven any farther. So however it got that way, I'm sure that, that probably had something to do with his decision to get out of the vehicle and, and abandon it. One of the early reports was that one of the windows in the squad was shot out. Is that true? Yes, the windows are uh, shot out of, uh, windows are, are gone from both uh, squad cars. And we'll wait for some forensic evidence to tell us just, you know, these shots incoming, outgoing, uh, we'll wait for that to come from the, uh, from the uh, experts, so. Were the officers hurt? Uh, no, there were no reports of injuries to the officers. Is there any idea at this time what caused the escalation? Did I'm sorry, say again, please. Is there any idea at this time what kind of caused the escalation between the officers and the sister? Um, not actually. No. There's not really a, a, a good solid reason for it or a motive at all for it. Again, these are being explored with other police agencies. Uh, we're working with uh, some other law enforcement partners to try to determine some of these things. I would say probably maybe next week if we uh, you know, find anything else that's, that's really going to be concrete or solid to uh, talk to you about, we would certainly be doing that if there's anything to talk about. Did, have the officers been put on a different duty because of Well, this, Chief Hayes was here, and Chief Hayes can talk to you about those things. <clears throat> Chief? The, both officers are on administrative leave uh, until we get a chance to talk to them. The uh, normal way to handle something like this when it's traumatic like that, or you want to get the straight answer so you give them rest time. So the rest time, we're giving them paid administrative leave at this time. And it'll be a minimum until Friday and possibly longer, depending on how they're doing as far as, you know, if we feel like they're ready to talk about it yet. So they're on administrative leave. That's normal, I think, everywhere. Yep. Did either of your officers, Chief, have a body camera? No. Do we have any idea how long the RV possibly was parked at the college campus before the security guard noticed it or the time he noticed it versus the call? No, I don't know as I stand here how long it was there and when he saw it. Um, the indication is that he was making rounds. Okay. And when he was making his rounds, his normal rounds, uh, he sees it. And it's definitely something yeah. that isn't there, hasn't been there. But can I tell you how long? Not exactly, and I don't know for sure if he would be able to tell us. But uh, again, the interviews continue, the investigation will continue and try to give us some of these answers. And Sheriff or, or Todd, any history with this gentleman in LaSalle County? You mentioned yeah. maybe Michigan Plate, so I just, yeah. any rhyme or uh, reason no. why? No, we can find nothing so far. 
of any you know indications that he was here in the county or had any reason to be here in the county. But again, it uh, happened at 7:50 last night and it's 10 o'clock this morning. So there's a lot to be done yet before we get to the bottom of it, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more answers. Any idea if he has a criminal record in other areas? Uh, what we've been able to find from so far, uh, no, nothing really that uh, that has come out. And yes. you have reason to believe that there was anybody else in the RV, or are you pretty confident there's just one person? Uh, I think right now we're we're fairly confident there was only one person, and he was the only one in it. There's really no indication there was anyone else that we have right now. Again, crime scene guys uh, worked it uh, last night. Uh, it's a secure location now. It's being you know held uh, in a locked facility, and uh, I'm sure that they will be back to uh, continue some more in the daylight. Out in the weather and everything last night, so I'm thinking that uh, the crime scene will, will be back. I don't know if you guys were out at all last night, but the roads with the snow and the, the rain, it, it took a while for people to get here because we had people coming from outside the county to do things, and it's not that they weren't working hard, it just took time to get people here safely, and it was early this morning when you know the, the process started, so we don't have all the details yet. And Todd, can you go over the charges again, so far, I guess? At this point, he's not been charged with anything. I would anticipate uh, probably the, the first charge being aggravated discar discharge of a firearm uh, with the police officer being involved. That is a Super X, and it has a mandatory minimum prison sentence with it. So, uh, but that's based upon the early initial information that we have you know, we just, we, we don't have statements from the police officers yet, so it's speculative. Uh, we have an overview of the events, but we don't have details. So I'm real hesitant to say anything other than, you know, what I've said so far. Anything else from you fellows at all? Uh, do we have a booking photo for the gentleman yet? Not yet. Okay. Bill. It will be available, um, should he be charged. Uh, it will be available, we can get that to you. All right. Okay, all right. Thank you all. Everybody's got one of these? Okay, fine. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you.